Well, good evening, everyone. It's great to see you here tonight. Let's all stand. We're going to start off by singing Crown Him with Many Crowns. We're just going to sing the first, second, and third verse. Let's lift this up tonight. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns, all oh, music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king. Through all eternity, crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and sides, rich wounds yet visible above, in beauty glorify, no angel in the sky can fully bear that sign. had mysteries so bright on the last crown him the lord of life who triumphed o'er the grave who rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save his glories now we see who died and rose on high who died eternal life to bring and lives that death may die well, would you pray with me on this uh wednesday evening father we thank you so much for the privilege it is to be back here in your house tonight and i pray god as we uh, open up the word as we uh, pray together as we fellowship with one another our hearts would be knit together in you, Lord, and uh, Father, we'd go away from this place encouraged, and Lord, that our souls would be lifted up, our hearts would be calmed, our, uh, Lord, our, our faith would be deepened in you tonight. Father, I pray for all of our young people over in the fellowship hall and our youth group as they'll go out in just a moment. Uh, Lord, may tonight just be a profitable time of being drawn closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to sing another song tonight. Um, and uh, I'm sure that you know uh, most of it, okay, but uh, it's an older hymn that's got, that's been put, uh, a chorus has been put to it, okay? So, uh, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. You guys know that one? Okay, all right. So then, uh, then there's a little chorus added to it. So once you catch it, go ahead and uh, join in with me. But it is, uh, the name of the song is called Cornerstone. I hope it's built. I hope it's built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. Every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, my cornerstone, the weak made strong.
love this third verse. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, more less to stand before the Christ alone, cornerstone. He is Lord, the Lord of all. On that chorus one more time. Christ alone. Go ahead and have a seat tonight. Go ahead and have a seat. Let's, we'll dismiss our teens to go ahead out. Hope you guys have a good night. Thank you for that, Tana. Praying for us. I want to take our Bibles this evening uh, back to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, number uh, 5, 1 Corinthians. And as we continue to walk through the book, of Corinthians and Paul's letter to them, 1 Corinthians chapter number 4 this evening. And uh, I really want to tonight spend a lot more time uh, in our prayer time, so I am intentionally uh, going to get to the prayer time, uh, but I think Paul definitely has some great uh, insights for us this evening as we look at um, life in his image, life in his image from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 4 from verses 9 through 21. Let's start off tonight by reading what Paul has to say here. He says, for I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both uh, hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place, and labor working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat it or welcome it. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but uh, as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, or Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, some are puffed up, as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know, not the speech of them that which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love? In the spirit and in the spirit of meekness. May, the, may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. But let's go ahead and pray. Uh, one more time tonight. Father, we're thankful again to be in your house and open up your word. 
and uh, Lord, I know that uh, many have already had a long week, and Father, we're thankful for the temperatures rising up here, and I pray, God, that that uh, does continue, and uh, Lord, I also just ask uh, for all the different situations that are going on in different people's homes and in their families and in their lives, Lord, I just ask that uh, tonight we could take a break from uh, the world that's uh, tugging on us in so many different ways and uh, simply look at uh, the scripture tonight and be greatly blessed by it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Last Wednesday we talked about uh, the measure of a minister, the measure of a minister, and Paul said, listen, I'm just, I'm just the, the, the guy on the lowest rung row in the boat uh, is what he called himself, remember? And he says, I just want to continue to row the boat. I'm not uh, anybody. I'm just a slave. I'm just a under rower. I am just a steward. And, uh, and he's really uh, being intentional about how he sees himself. But he's also trying to point out something very, very important about how the Corinthians see themselves. All right. And I think uh, we will uh, see that as the night goes on. Uh, and, and tonight I've, I've got... I believe it's four questions that I want to ask us tonight from this passage, from this portion of Scripture. Four questions that I want to ask as we try and live uh, or life in His image, living life in His image. We're called to be uh, Christ to this world. And uh, notice what He says here in verse number 9. For I think that God hath set us forth, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Now, right here at the very beginning, Paul is talking about the uh, uh, what's about to happen and what is happening to uh, all of the major church leaders. They've been scattered out all over the place now. Persecution is following them. They're going to uh, continue to be persecuted. And by persecution, I don't mean that they've got a door slammed in their face. I don't mean uh, that they, they don't get a job opportunity. They're... Uh, uh, sewn into uh, uh, lambskins and thrown into the Colosseum to be eaten by lions, okay? Uh, they are dipped by Nero into hot wax and burned alive in Nero's gardens at night, okay, for the cause of Christ. A and so persecution is coming, and, and you can read Fox's Book of Martyrs and, and, tr and Tradition, uh, that is passed down from church history that tells us how each and every one of the apostles uh, was uh, killed. And soon it, it'll be that Paul uh, will lose his head over preaching the gospel at Rome. And so we see a track record of Paul understanding uh, what it's going to mean to live life in the image of Christ. What it's going to mean. What it, not, not just... Not just the words, right? Not just saying it, but what it means to actually be it. Those are two different things, are they not? They really are. So he says here in verse number 10, and this is where we get our first question. He says, we are fools for Christ's sake. We are fools for Christ's sake. And you know, you know the word. We've talked about it several times already. It's that word morias, right? Uh, we're, we're morons for Christ's sake. I want to ask you a question tonight. And, and listen, I want to ask myself a question. I don't want to ask everybody watching on the internet tonight. Are you willing to be a fool for Christ? Are you willing to be a fool for Christ? Well, let me just say this by, uh, you know, way of, uh, you know, understanding what we're talking about now and really kind of just making it clear to us. Um, if you and I are unwilling to talk about Christ with anyone, then we are unwilling to be a fool for Christ. You know, there, there are no secret Christians. You know, uh, th this, this life that you and I are called to uh, is going to cost us something. And Paul said, everywhere I go, he said, everywhere I go later on, uh, I preach in every church, I teach everywhere I go the gospel. Are we willing to be a fool for Christ's sake? But he contrasts them. He says, but you guys are wise in Christ. Well, hold on a second. Is he being a little, uh, is he being a little facetious here? Is he being a little sarcastic here? 
I believe he is. If he calls himself a fool, but, but I'm a fool for Christ, but you guys, you guys are wise. And look, notice what he says. Uh, we are weak, but you are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. What is it we're trying to get out of this Christian life? What is, it try, what is it that we're trying to garner to ourselves? Are we trying to garner wisdom? Are we trying to garner strength? Are we co- trying to ga- garner honor? Paul said, listen, I'd rather be a fool for Christ's sake than be wise in the ways of this world. I'd rather be weak for Christ's sake than be strong according uh, to the measurements of this world. I'd rather be despised for Christ than to be honored by men. Somebody once said, he, he is no fool to give up what he cannot keep, to gain what he cannot lose. He's no fool to give up what he cannot keep, to gain what he cannot lose. I believe that was Jim Elliott. And we know Jim Elliott, his story. Maybe you, maybe you don't know that he went down to the Aka Indians and he and several other men in flying planes Uh, over the Indians, dropping gifts, dropping gifts, dropping gifts, and one day landed there, and all the missionary men were murdered by that tribe, the Aka Indians. And then one day, his wife goes back and leads the man to the Lord that murdered her husband with a spear. Are we willing to be a fool for Christ? You've got to be a fool to live that way. Well, the truth is when it comes down to it, I'm willing to be a fool for Christ. He goes on, verse number 11. He says, even unto this present hour, we both uh, hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted. That word means beaten, okay? And, and, and buffeted, it, it has the idea of beaten uh, repeatedly, okay? And have no certain dwelling place. They labor and they are working with their own hands, being reviled, we bless, and being persecuted, we suffer it, being defamed, we entreat it. Uh, we are made as the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. Let me ask you a question. Here's question number two, question number one. Are we willing to be a fool for Christ's sake? Number two, to live in his image, are we willing to suffer for Christ? Are we willing to suffer for Christ? Look at this list. It's an awful list. I, I, I don't know that I would get past one or two things on the list, right? You, you know, so uh, when we have a flat tire, uh, when we walk out in the morning, we have a flat tire, all of a sudden, we're not going to live that day for Christ. That just ruins our day, you know? But look at this list. Look at this list here. He says, we hunger. We thirst. They're naked. They're, they're buffeted. They're beaten. There's no, place, there's no place where they know they're going to stay. They're working. They're laboring with their own hands, and, and they're reviled for it. They're called, called names. They're uh, defamed. They're persecuted. They're made as the filth of the world. Get a picture in your mind of the filth of the world. Your definition. And Paul said, for Christ's sake, I'll be that. For Christ's sake. I can't help but wonder if in our lives we've set the bar too low. The image of Christ, to live life in his image, have we set the bar too low? Are we willing to be a fool for Christ? Are we willing to suffer for Christ? Verse number 14 I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Now, the truth is that uh, these words, remember, uh, what, what would happen is uh, the church would be gathered wherever they would gather, and this letter, this giant scroll, would be read uh, in the church. All right, So the church is hearing these things uh, all together, all at once, and then they're supposed to pass it around to the other churches, make copies and all those things. And so imagine sitting in church and your former pastor Uh, a former pastor who led you to the Lord, who has loved you, who's discipled you and baptized you, all these different things, and he's talking about uh, how low the bar is uh, that you've set. And then he says, listen, I I want you to understand, I'm not writing these things to make you feel like a a piece of trash, all right? I'm not writing these things to to shame you, all right? 
but I love you, and there's a love that, that, that's there for Paul, like a father that has led individuals to Christ. That's what he's talking about, a spiritual father. He says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you, for though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Now, here's the deal. Uh, any time any one of us uh, has the privilege, has the opportunity to lead someone to Christ, uh, we should then take on the responsibility of nurturing that person up in Christ, discipling that person to have a deeper relationship with Christ. It can't always, doesn't always work out that way. You know, you uh, witness to someone on a plane or uh, you're in a far away country or whatever it may be, but there should be people right here in this place uh, under, under our guidance, under our uh, teaching that we are building up for the cause of Christ. Are you willing uh, to suffer for Christ? Are you willing to be a fool uh, for Christ? Are you willing to be duplicated for Christ? Are you willing to take on the responsibility of sharing your faith and then building somebody else's faith up? You know, the truth is, truth is, preacher, one day somebody's going to replace us. Who? Who's going to take your spot? Who, who is it, who is it, church, that, that you have poured into? A spiritual father, a spiritual mother. Who is it that you've nurtured up to take your place? You know, I was always amazed many times at uh, Jesus Christ when people would come to him and, and they're almost falling at him to, to, to go to heaven, right? You're like the rich young ruler, what must I do to be saved? And it's like almost, wow, this is the... The simplest, uh, you know, this is a can of corn, you know, just knock it out of the park. And then Jesus says a whole bunch of things to him that, that no evangelism course would ever teach you to say. And it's like, what happened here? And that person, uh, they really weren't ready. They really didn't want what Jesus had to offer. But it should be that you and I are willing to be duplicated for Christ. Look at what happens here. In verse number 16, he says, Wherefore, or because of that, I, I'm, I'm begging you to follow me. I'm begging you to keep following me. Hey, I shared the gospel with you. I, I've showed you all this truth. I'm begging you to stick with me, okay? But then notice, verse number 17, For this cause I have sent unto you Timothy. Hold on a second, Paul. You're asking us to keep following you, and you're not even coming? No, no, no. He's sending his duplicate. Paul says, I can't be there. Can't be there. God's got me over here. But Paul, through the grace of God, was able to send his duplicate to them. Are you willing to be duplicated for Christ? For this cause I've sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son. Notice, notice, he loves him and that he's faithful in the Lord, okay? And he will bring you into remembrance of all my ways which be in Christ. In other words, uh, everything Paul knows, Timothy knows. As faithful as Paul is, Timothy's faithful. As much as Paul suffered, Timothy suffered. As much as Paul's a fool for Christ, Timothy's a fool for Christ. It's a duplicate. It's amazing. He says, as I teach everywhere in every church, he, you know, Timothy's been following me, he's been listening, and he's ready to do it. Are you willing to be a fool? For, am I willing to be a fool for Christ? Am I willing to suffer for Christ? Am I willing to be duplicated for Christ? And lastly tonight, let me ask ourselves this last question. Are we walking in pride or are we walking in the power of Christ? And Paul mentions this here at the end of chapter number four. He says, now some of you are puffed up 
as though I would not come to you. They, they took offense. They said, Paul, I don't want your duplicate. You know, if you don't want to come, fine, whatever. Paul says, wait a second. Why, why so angry, friend? Why, why so hard-hearted, Christian? He says, I love you. I, I care about you. I've poured my life into you. Verse 19, but I will come shortly if the Lord will. And we'll know not the speech of them that are puffed up. I don't, I don't want to hear the ones that are walking in pride, but I want to find the ones who are walking in power. It just keeps coming up, and it should keep coming up in our lives. This power, this power, this power. Where's this power from? Where's this power from? It's from the Holy Spirit of God. That's the only power we have to live this Christian life. God doesn't need my talents. God doesn't need my ideas. God doesn't need my money. He doesn't need uh, anything from me. He gives me the power to live. He uses those things, but he gives me the power. He says, for the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. He, He says, what will you say? Shall I come to you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? He says, (laughs) <laughs> you know, one day Christ will rule with a rod of iron, will he not? And the Revelation tells us about that. He said, Paul says, do you want me to come, you want me to come uh, with you and, and, and beat you? Or you want me to come to you and love you? He says, I'm, walk, I'm trying to walk, I'm trying to live in Christ's image. And so I'm not coming with a rod, I'm coming in meekness, I'm coming in love. I'm coming trying to get the things straightened out in your life. I'm trying to duplicate in you the image of Christ. Are we willing tonight to be fools for Christ? Are we willing to suffer for Christ? We we really... We really do a good job of insulating ourselves from suffering, don't we? I mean, it's almost like it's almost like the number one goal. And I get it. I don't want my I don't want my kids to be hungry. I don't want them uh, to go uh, without, and uh, I don't want I, you know I don't want bad things to happen to them. But I do want them to live a a faithful life for Christ. And the truth is, that will cost something. It will cost something. It should cost something. That which you obtain cheaply, you esteem lightly. Right? Oh, it was just a quarter. I don't worry about it. It's just a quarter. Oh, man, that cost me $10,000. You will take care of that. (laughs) Paul says, listen, listen. Being conformed in the image of Christ has cost me dearly and giving it to you sharing the gospel with you has cost me dearly and i want you to hold it and i want you to hold it for yourself in high regard are we willing to suffer for the cause of christ are we willing to be duplicated for the cause of christ and are we walking in pride or are we walking in the power of christ are we walking in the spirit of god well like i said i really wanted to get to our prayer time tonight i want us to have a lot of time uh, to pray tonight. So um, let's go ahead and pray. Brother John's going to shut our stream off. And I just wanted to say thanks to all those who uh, hopped in via the live stream. We care about you too. We're praying for you. And uh, if you're local, we would love to have you come join us Sunday morning, 1030, Sunday night at 6, or Wednesday night here at 7. Uh, We'd love to be a great blessing to you and love on your family. I hope you guys have a great night.